After many months of hustle, Samsung finally released the One UI 7 Beta 1 and I have it here guys on my S24 Ultra. If you want to check a comparison with One UI 6.1, you might want to check some of my previous videos. Also, if you live in, in a country that uh, is not supported, you can also check my video on how to sideload it. Pay attention always to the disclaimers. In this video, I'm going to show you all the new changes as per the official Samsung One UI 7 Beta 1 change lock. Without any doubt, the Galaxy AI will be huge as well for the S25 series. Galaxy AI unlock the full power of your Galaxy and when you click here, you are going to see all the nitty gritty details of what you can do. There are 18 tips and by the way, some of those are absolutely new like the now brief. Some of those we already seen like the sketch to draw or the AI portrait generation or all the nice translation. But One UI 7 is here and there are plenty of new things. Let's start the video directly. The very first thing in the changelog says Galaxy AI write like a pro and they are paying a lot of attention to things that you can do like write things on your phone and then correct the spelling and grammar from here you can hardly tell what is new because it pretty much looks like the standard samsung stuff but in one year 7 samsung redesigned a lot of key elements new buttons menus notifications and control bars they now use a more curvy design software animation but also new icons and new widgets so let's start with the icons the camera icon is brand new so is the galaxy and the phone icon here dialer settings icon also brand new and they change pretty much all the Samsung stock icons calculator icon now looks like this then we have the clock icon and also the color icon but this isn't only limited to icons it's also redesigned widgets and now guys I'm gonna read something from the changelog fresh new app icon will look great on your home screen with new visual metaphors and color schemes that make it easier to recognize the app you need widgets also have been completely redesigned with more colorful images and more consistent layouts. So, okay, let's just remove this thing here and let's check the new widgets. So I'm going to directly go inside widgets. This thing here is the new widget styles and we can already see very rounded corners, not only here, but also in the search bar and pretty much everywhere in the same menu. And I'm really happy with this because it really looks more aligned compared to how it used to be. Those here are the new weather widgets. This is weather and clock. All right, let's just go and put this on the screen. All right. And you can see, by the way, uh, the same menu pretty much looks like One UI 6, but also not the same because the way you can edit the widgets, is kind of different. Also pay attention, guys. We now have a widget title and I'm going to show you later that this is removable. So you can decide to leave it on or also we still have the option to create a stack if you want. Go inside the settings and just use a light dark mode, right? Match phone setting, which I like, or, you know, just go without a background. For now, I'm gonna leave it like this. The animation of the widgets is very good. Sometimes though, not so consistent, but again, it's just the first beta, guys. We need to wait and hopefully get access to the other betas where this is going to be rock stable. Now let's go back to the clock widgets, the alarm widgets, the analog clock, and also the digital clock, of course, new dual clocks. I'm gonna use that one and put it here. Let's open the clock, fancy animation. Hold the finger here, settings, guys. So here we do have a lot of presets. This, this, or this, or this. And again, we can have it with the background, without the background, light and dark, or match the font setting, and also adjust the transparency, which is really, really cool. This is the digital clock. And this is how resizing works. You can see we get from this shape here, right, to this shape, to that shape. It's all dynamic. And remember that I'm showing you all the new changes exactly the way they appear in the change log. And the next thing is called enhanced home screen. Simplified home screen grid. So guys, this is the home screen. If we click here, we can go to settings. And now let's see what has changed. According to Samsung, your home screen now looks even better than before. A new standard grid layout keeps things symmetrical and makes it easier to use one AI widgets in standard sizes. Improved home screen landscape view. This is very important and I'm also gonna be testing this. According to Samsung, we're now getting a more consistent look for your home screen, even when using your phone horizontally. And with this big screen size, it totally makes sense to have a fully optimized landscape view. 
Now, widgets now also have similar aspect ratio in landscape view and text labels appear below icons instead of besides. Them. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my phone and just rotate it to the landscape, the animation, beautiful. And you can see that these icons here align as well. Now let's just try to open the widgets. All right, yep, just a tiny stutter, but overall, I mean, very pleasant. You can see the new, the way Samsung call them soft animations. And by the way, you can check my two previous videos about animations comparison between One UI 7 Beta versus ColorOS 15 and HypeOS 2 and iOS 18. But now let's continue with One UI 7 because now there is something built in the home screen that was only available before via GoodLock and one of the many models. And as per the official change log, we are now able to adjust the size of app icons and choose whether or not to show text label below app icons and the widgets. So let me show you guys. This was the standard size I showed you. I'm gonna go now for the bigger one. You can see all my icons immediately really getting big. And now I'm gonna show you the smallest size. This is pretty much what I'll probably use. We do have app labels. Okay, so I will remove the app labels and now guess what's gonna happen. I don't have any app label, nowhere. Not on my home screen and not here in my drawer. Oh, yeah, by the way, did I tell you we have vertical app drawer? Yeah, just watch the video, I'm gonna show all of that. Now back to the app and widget styles, enable the app labels and you can decide to only remove the labels for the widgets. It really happens for all the widgets. See here, calendar, we do have the app label. All right, let's check some other widgets. Spotify, no app label. So it seems that this kind of works only with the standard native widget. And yes, you can now adjust the shape, the background color, the end the transparency for each widget, large home screen folders. Finally, this arrived in One UI 7. We already knew this was coming because of the leaked Home App APK. I did some videos a while ago. When you click on the folder, you can now hit enlarge. This is now the new standard size and it looks good. With Home App, we're gonna get more options. Also what I like, I can directly launch apps now from those folders. And this is not possible in the small folders. I always have to go inside the folder and click on the application. Now here I can decide to just launch X. If I want to open the folder, I can click here and then the folder is going to open. The next thing in the change log is the finder. Now pay attention guys. The finder is down below, so the search bar has been moved to the bottom of the app screen. It's easier to access with one hand. I absolutely agree with this. We can now also add a button finder to the quick panel. Something that I'm not sure if it's on the change log. How do we get to the vertical app drawer? This is really crazy guys, but that's the way it works. When we go to sort, and we choose custom order, it's gonna be more or less like the standard landscape mode. But when you click on sort and you choose the alphabetical order, it's going to look like this. And also something fancy, when you hold your finger here on that bar, you are able to navigate quicker to the apps you want. Also with some nice haptics. Next section in the official change log is lock screen and always on display. You can see here something called the now bar and the now bar checks the information that you need right away and start essential features without unlocking your phone. I'm going to demonstrate this. I think this is really cool. Ongoing tasks will appear in the now bar at the bottom of your phone screen so you can check information quickly. Those are the very exact words from the change logs. Now what is important, this includes media controls, interpreter, stopwatch, timer, voice recorder, Samsung health and more. Let's try to test this first with media. Just gonna open my Spotify. All right, now song is playing. I'm gonna go on my always on display and this here guys is the new now bar. Remember, it only works with selected apps. Media is one of them. Always on display, double tap, lock screen. And here we do have this very nice and fancy animation. And now I'm back on the home screen. Let's try to start a timer and see what is gonna happen. So let's go with this one. Gonna click start, Minima <laughs> minimize this. Okay, nice and fancy animation. All right, okay, you can see what happens. So now I would lock my phone yeah, the timer. And the timer, guys, works in always on display. This is really, really good. I really like that one. You can see always on display, timer is active. I'm gonna double tap to go inside the lock screen. All right, timer is active. Honestly, what I'm thinking right now, it would have been great here if we have two things like the timer, but then also let's say the media player. Let's keep the timer on. I'm going to enlarge this folder and first show you something I don't like. Here I have more apps. 
but there is no way for me to scroll to these apps and I can do this in ColorOS and Hyper. So I have to click here. I'm going to launch the voice recorder. And now I'm recording, I'm gonna minimize this. And now you can see guys, I have these two overlays, right? But it seems that now this will take priority. I'm gonna see if my timer is still working. Yes, the timer is still working. So if I now go back and put the voice recorder and minimize it and I go on my lock and always on, yeah, you can see it's only the most recent app. I have launched Google Maps, but when I go to the always on display, yeah, I still have Spotify because it's running. So I'm not sure if this integration works with Google Maps, maybe some other maps. Let's test also Samsung Notes. So I'm gonna start Notes, some fancy drawing, all right? I'm just gonna minimize this. And what happens if I go to the lock screen and the always on display? Nothing really. It's going to rain at 10 hundred hours today. All right, and what happens when I minimize this thing? So it seems that the integration is either not working or I'm not doing something correctly, but you get the point with the now bar. Now let's check the lock screen. And again, I'm following the official Samsung change lock for One UI 7. More flexible editing, it's easier than ever to edit your lock screen and we can now resize the clock to any size and drag it around where we want. This wasn't the case before, because we were limited with some positions. Right now I can have it any size and I can really move the whole widget around. Speaking of widgets, I do have the battery and the weather. So we have battery widgets, one battery widget or a combination, calendar widgets that you can use on your lock screen. We do have also camera widgets, custom camera, remember this is a cool one, clock widgets, two options, device care, right? Optimization, digital well-being. Also the gallery widget is here, interpreter, four widgets conversation mode, listening mode, and then guys, modes and routines, two widgets, reminder, another two widgets, weather, we have seven widgets for the weather, and this is really, really good, and last but not least, two recorder widgets. And why am I showing this? Because according to the official change lock, you can now see more and do more even when your phone is locked, because apparently there are just more widgets, and yes, there are more shortcuts as well. Let me click here, no up or sound, torch, flight mode, you can see. I can now also use individual apps for the shortcuts and I can do this on the left or on the right shortcut. This is good. And just now we get to the new updated quick panel because this is really a big thing. So quick panel and notifications and the big change here is, okay, let me show you. When I swipe right, I get access to the new redesigned quick panel. It's looking fresh, it's also similar to the previous one, but then again, we do have the new rounded corners here and we do have the media player being integrated. Now, when I swipe left, boom, I only get access to my notifications and I really love this view. You can see how collapsing works and we still have this thing left and right where we can get rid of them. And by the way, guys, you can go back to the old style. Now, how? Go inside a quick panel, click here. There's gonna be something called the panel setting notification and quick view, you can go for separate or for together. Boom, quick panels and all the notifications. Here we have exactly the same story. And see what happens here. The more I go to the right, the volume bar becomes brighter and the change lock tell us that the icon on notifications are now the same as the icon that appears on our home screen. So we know that this is the weather, we know this is family link, we know this is Facebook Messenger. The group notification appear as a stack of cards. Tap a stack to show all notifications in the group. So I'm just gonna tap it, boom. You see, I really like this. I can uncollapse this, boom. We have now everything ungrouped. And now we arrive at the camera, guys. This is the new redesigned camera. So camera buttons, controls, modes, everything has been reorganized to make it easier to find the features you need and to give you a clearer preview of the picture you're taking or the video that you are recording. So what do they mean? See here, guys, we don't have anything on top of the bar, it's down below. So when I click here, I'm going to be able to access the settings, the timer, the format, and also some new settings like the exposure control that are going to be saved for that specific mode. If I go to the back camera, you can see that my exposure is set to zero. If I turn back to the front camera, you can see that my setting now is safe. We can now save the exposure levels for each individual mode. On the back camera, we now have a 2X button. Samsung calls this lossless zoom, but it's pretty much a curve from the main sensor. And by the way, there is a function that I like a lot. When I try to go and choose different cameras, 30X and 100X will appear here. And this is really, really good, guys, because with this control, it's not so easy. The photo, the pro photo and pro video modes also got an upgrade. 
Now in the pro video mode, I am shooting a video and I have this real time control on the zoom and this is very good guys. So when I'm shooting in pro video, I have now real time control on the zoom and yep, I can tell you, I really love it. Like the way this works is very, very smooth and this allows you to just perform minor corrections for a better zoom transitions. The pro video mode features also updated mic controls. I don't have an external mic right now, I cannot show this. We do also have updated composition guides, grid lines and level, grid lines only or level only. This is level only, only grid levels, and this is both. I do have the level and the grid lines in one. The next section in the change log is called enjoy your special moments, erase object from photos, it's a snap to remove unwanted items from photos, just touch and hold the item you want to get rid of. Let's touch the item, all right, you can see. I have plenty of options, I can copy, share it, I can save it as a sticker, I can also edit this. Free from colleges, go beyond the preset layouts for colleges in gallery, you can now adjust the size, position and rotation of images in your collage to create your own unique layout. Okay, let's just try to create it, yep, this is it. And this thing here is also updated, because besides the various options that you have as templates, you can just go and do some changes on your own. And I think this is cool, if you use this as a stock editor, then you have plenty of options. Why not also create some of your thumbnails? There are also new effects for motion photos, like slowing down things or adding the boomerang effect. Something that is interesting, powerful video editing. Easily undo your edits, don't worry about making mistakes, so let's just go and try to edit the video. And remember, we do have also the studio, but this is not the studio, this is now the stock editor from the gallery. Undo and redo options are now available when editing videos for actions such as transformation, filters and tone changes. Okay, so let's just go and apply this filter, right? I can revert it, so apparently I can undo it. And I know this isn't groundbreaking, but still new options and features to make things easier for us. And remember, when you launch gallery, you can click on the hamburger menu and you can go to the studio. And the studio is really a very powerful editor, at least a very powerful mobile editor that you get for free by just using a Samsung phone. And in One UI 7 Beta, Samsung added some new things here as well, like some funny new animated stickers. And I know that it might look like a gimmick, but here it is, and we can now use this for free. So honestly, I'm just happy with what they're doing. And yeah, we do have also this Samsung logo directly integrated here. <laughs> there are plenty of updates for Samsung Health too, but I'm not sure if I'm able to access them. The new mindfulness feature in Samsung Health that help you manage stress and anxiety in your daily life. There are also new Samsung Health badges. Never forget your medication. Some of those things are probably dual locked and may be available in the US, but I'm not able to access them right now. But also, yes, Samsung Health got some updates in One UI 7 Beta 1. The next section in One UI 7 Beta Change Lock is all about productivity and boosting productivity because remember, that's still a business device, right? And multiple pop up windows from the same app are minimized, they are going to be combined into a single icon. Tapping the icon will show the preview of all open windows from the app, allowing you to easily select what you want. Now, I'm not sure, guys, how I can get multiple windows of any of the apps that I use, but you pretty much get the idea. That's gonna be combined here, and the moment you tap on either of them, you're gonna get this nice preview. Also, you can click here and expand directly both apps. I think that's pretty neat, but this doesn't stop here. The next option is grouping your alarm. Create group of alarms that you want to control to get in the clock app. So, Let's say I have these two alarms. I can now select both of them and group them and say, right, a fitness routine, whatever. All right, I can add this. And now I've created a group of these two alarms and I can stop them or turn them on just with a single tap. Again, nothing fancy, nothing groundbreaking, but still a new feature in One UI 7. Also, you can now set individual volume level or your alarm now by default all your alarms will have the same volume level but you can just use different volume for each alarm my files functionality is also upgraded you are now getting a preview on the file tabs that you have specifically for bigger screens you're gonna get this preview on the right routines are also upgraded more powerful you can use if else logic and also get data as variables we didn't have that option before you can now just select an event and drag and drop it where you want and there are so many other things that you can do with the calendar you can show separate calendars on widgets really put more control on your own schedule reminders got a boost too now you can auto delete reminders that are completed, or you can create a repeating reminder that can show multiple days for repeating instead of just one. 
So again, very small, very tiny things, guys. But at the end, I do believe that they will add up to a nice update that we all want One UI 7 to be. The next section in the change log is called Connect and Share. Now we do have recommended devices for quick share. Don't waste time searching for the right device. Device sign into your Samsung account and devices you've shared within the past will appear directly here. This is really convenient. One UI 7 has also some security updates. They're using the Nox matrix that monitors the supported devices that are signed in to your account and you can check them using a secure private blockchain. Each device can check the security status of the other devices. And from here, I can check all my registered devices. This is really, really cool. The auto blocker can block cyber attacks when the maximum restrictions are turned on. 2G networks are now blocked and your phone won't automatically reconnect to Wi-Fi networks. This restriction can help prevent attackers. So I can turn the auto blocker on and I can go for a maximum restriction. When I click these guys and I click on, right, I'm going to get app protection, block device admins apps, also blocking of a 2G network and my phone will not connect to an unsecure Wi-Fi. And by the way, see, if you want to turn this off, right, and turn this off, you're gonna need to provide authentication. Now, what about the battery and the charging? Because battery and charging is the next section in the change log. More options for power saving. You now have more control over what happens when your phone is in power saving mode. So let me put the phone in the power saving mode, boom. And from here, you can see everything that happens. Now, this isn't new, we had this before, but now there are many more options, like set the screen timeout, turn on dark mode. And from here, we do have still the adaptive power saving that I decided to set to off because I just think that I have better battery with this. Also, the battery protection. This thing is a new. You can use the basic one. Once your phone goes to 100%, it will stop charging. When it goes below 95%, it will start again. Adaptive one, right? And then the maximum one. And the maximum one, guys, now is new because you can decide between 80, 85, 90, and 95. Again, guys, no big changes, but so many small, tiny, under the hood changes that eventually will make One UI 7 great again. Also, we do have a new charging effect. Pay attention, when I hook up the phone, the charging notification is here, right? And according to the change lock, the charging confirmation is smaller and appears at the bottom of the screen instead of the middle to prevent interruptions while still making it easily for you to check that your phone is charging. Once again, here, I really love it. By the way, did you notice how the battery looks like? Really cool. Finally, we do have the battery percentage inside the battery. Game Booster also got some updates and now you can use customization for individual games. So let's say for Call of War Zone, I can just use max FPS. But for any other game, I can use max screen resolution or let's say the frame booster. I know that the game booster is not one of the most favorite apps of all mobile gamers out there because of GOS and etc. There are also updated options in the accessibility menu, but I do believe that I've covered the most important areas, guys. Again, in this video, I wanted to go through the official change log and really show you bit by bit what has been changed the way Samsung meant us to see that thank you so much for watching guys and if you have liked this video just go and watch some of my older videos thank you so much stay safe vst over and bye